I'm so, so excited to show you this next light. I think out of all of the lights that I've played with, that I've tried, this is probably my most favorite light, my most favorite gadget. I'm sure a lot of you who like food photography have seen that the recent trends have really been about using hard lights with food photography, where you have really harsh shadows, you have like really bright bits. Um, but then also the use of gobos, which are uh, go between objects where people are sticking, you know, like leaves or branches in front of the light. A lot of the times light is shined through blinds so that you'll see, you know, like the shadows and the light shine through and then project onto the image itself. What the team at Godox has actually done is they've made a couple of focusing lights, the S30 first, and then now the S60, which is a bit more powerful. These are focusing lights. You can focus and pick and choose which part of the scene that you want to light. These are hard lights. It's meant to really create drama, create something that's dramatic. People use that effect in film and, and cinematography all the time, but now it's just being applied to food. And so the neat thing about these lights is not only do they function just as a focusing light, but very easily you can connect an attachment to it. Um, they have these discs where you can create, you know, whatever effect that they have discs for. So you could do blinds, you could do windows. It makes it so much more convenient if you want to change the, the effect from a scene. Today, I thought what I'd do is to just simply show you how to put this setup together so that you can shoot your photography and really have fun um, with this set. If you're anything like me, sometimes I'm, I'm not the biggest tech person. And so when I see that like, oh, this thing seems to require like a lot of different parts, a lot of different um, equipment, my mind just shuts off and I, I, and I don't know what to do. But what I'll show today is that it's actually just a couple pieces that you attach onto one another and it's just really, really easy to do. At the end, I'll actually show you uh, two different setups where you can use your own light as well. So if you don't have, you know, an S60 and you just want to be using whatever, you know, studio light you have, you can do that. Um, there is also an option to be using a speed light. So if you have just, you know, like a, a portable speed light, something small, that that is a possibility as well. So it's just um, some more attachments and I will put actually the list of the equipment all down below with the links and the names so that you all will know, okay, which ones to get, how to connect this, how to connect that. Um, it sounds complicated, it's actually really, really simple. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to show you obviously is the light itself. So this is the Godox S60. You just mount it to, um, to a basic light stand. What it also has is um, it's this attachment barn door. You just you know open it and close it and you can adjust where you focus that light some more. So in terms of controlling this light, really uh, two main things to mention. One is on the power block itself is where you can control the intensity of the light. So do you want it to be brighter, less bright, um, and then adjust the levels that way. Also a button for special effects. So if you are somebody that shoots a lot of video or shoots video and wants to create that cinema type effect, um, there's like blinking lights, there's different different things that you can actually uh, do with this light as well. Behind the light is where you can adjust for something called a beam angle. Very simply, it's just how narrow or dispersed the light is. In a way, when you just put this against the wall, it 
looks like you're kind of just focusing the light, but what it's actually doing is just adjusting the angle, whether the light is kind of going out this way and kind of being more dispersed, or it's a little bit more narrow. One thing that I did want to mention is that uh, this light comes with a wrench. You actually need this. And what it is, is it's to tighten uh, just this screw here. And, and it allows for the light to tilt up, to tilt down. Um, and so, you know, don't lose it. Don't, don't give it away. <laughs> So the next piece of equipment that I'm going to show is the SAP projector lens, and that goes right onto the light itself. And I know what y'all are thinking because you're like, oh my God, lens, lens goes onto a camera. What is it doing on, on a light? Pretty much for the same reason. So when you put a lens onto a camera, essentially it helps that camera focus. It focuses the light so that you get a, either like a more clear photo or a more blurry photo. This does the same thing to the light. It is like a lens. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> what you'll see when you adjust this unit and bring it up, bring it down, is that you'll see that the, the light or the effect gets more focused. Of course, there's a lot of room to be really creative here because whereas in a photo, maybe you want everything to be, you know, sharp and in focus, when you are using a focusing light, when you are using different effects, having something be so, so sharp might not seem realistic. And so uh, being able to play around with it and moving the projection around, having it be, you know, slightly more dispersed, slightly blurrier, that's going to make your photo look a lot more natural. Uh, this typically, I think in kits comes in the 85 millimeter. I know that they have a 60 millimeter and then a 150 millimeter. And pretty much it's the same thing with lenses where the higher the number, really like the closer up the projection is going to be. One thing that I would make sure of when you're installing this onto your light, and sometimes it was a bit scary to note that, is that if you unscrew these, this whole thing, this whole thing comes off of this. And so you need to make sure that when you're unscrewing, that you don't forget that you're unscrewing too much and then the whole thing plops out and falls. And I think maybe, I think this only happens on the 85 millimeter, but maybe, you know, in the future that could be something uh, that they, fix or, or have some kind of like a safety mechanism so that this thing doesn't just completely uh, plop out. So there's, <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so this next bit is when we get to the really fun bits and we get to play with the, the gobo discs. So how you put the discs in is you need something called the S10, and it's just a bracket where um, the, the discs fit in. One thing that I just didn't know, cause I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that good with equipment, is that in order to put in the, the disc, you need to, this thing actually opens up. And so, kind of put your thumb and your finger there. And so this thing opens up and then you choose any disc that you want and then you plop that in. Obviously that made sense, but I was just a little bit, I looked at it and I was quite confused about like, okay, how do I get this disc in, in here? And so that's, um, that's how you would do it. So Godox actually makes a couple of different Gobo sets uh, for these. And these are 66 millimeter wide metal discs. This one specifically, the 004, has all of your um, window options and your windows and your blinds. So I know that this is probably going to be the most popular one. The 002 version has a lot of like the leaves and uh, the branches and whatnot. 
And I think when, when I was watching like the initial videos, there were so many people that like complained about like, oh, well, I can't use these gobos. Like, what would this be for? I think it was because a lot of the people who were talking were cinematographers. If you take a look through the Godox site, you'll see that actually a lot of these gobo sets, they're really good for product photography. And so to create kind of those leaves or those branches or like the little dots, definitely check out the different sets because you'll be surprised at once you, whether you focus in or you focus out, it really creates a ton of different effects and things that you might not find initially usable can actually be quite usable. <laughs> Okay, so now let's say we run into the situation where you say, Christina, I have my own studio lights already, or I need a stronger light. I need a bigger light. I need a stronger light. How would I be able to use that light and then still connect it to the projection units and all of the gobos and whatnot? Uh, so this is the Godox S17. And essentially what you'll do is you'll have the light, whatever light that you have, and you connect the S17 to it as kind of the, the in-between adapter. And then you do everything else the same. So the S17, and then you have the SAP, and of course, whatever gobo that you want to connect to it. So uh, it's a really neat piece of equipment for if you want to be you know, using your own lights that you have or using a bigger and more powerful light. Okay, so the last situation is if you have something like a portable speed light, just something small, you don't you know, have any you know, big lights or, or equipment and you don't really want to spend any more, um, you can attach a speed light to everything else. It will just be a little bit more because you need yet another attachment, but it's completely possible. What I ended up having to do uh, here is I took the Godox V1, the, the speed light, and I needed to attach it to the S2 bracket first so that it became a Bowens mount. After it became a Bowens mount, everything is the same as with the setup before. I will say that something that's difficult about it is a lot of speed lights might not have modeling lights. It's just a light that goes on so that you know, okay, like where is the light going to shoot so that you can adjust for everything. The V1 is nice because it does have a modeling light so you can vaguely see where the light is going to touch. But the thing with modeling lights, especially on speed lights, is that they're generally quite weak. Like they're really meant to just, you know, in general tell you where the light is going to hit. In conjunction to how many pieces of equipment you're putting on top of that light, you know, the projector and the focus and the gobo and everything, um, it diffuses that light so much so that by the time you install everything on, you can't really see where the light is anymore. And so what I found that I had to do was to just start shooting and then to see where that light is and then make my adjustments. What's also can be quite hard is because with this, you're also playing around with the focus. So not only are you trying to position where where you want the effect or where you want the light to be in your scene but you're also playing around with focus so it's hard to see that with a modeling light so what you have to do with a speed light is you have to take a couple more shots but once you get all of the settings right and once you have all of the positions and everything right you can just take it from there and it you know it still completely works i think that you know it's not always necessary to for everybody to buy you know new lights all the time if you have your own lights you can um, you can definitely make this work
And so, uh, yeah, I think, I think that is it for me today. Um, I just wanted to thank Godox for sending me this unit to test. It's definitely like my favorite piece of equipment by far. And it encourages you to be, uh, to just be really creative. So hope you all uh, enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions uh, down below and um, yeah, I will see you all again next time. Thank you.